again. Okay, the objective of this video is to show you how gout is formed from high purine to high uric acid and then the formation of uric crystal that result in a gout of inflammation or gout attacks. All right, um, as we all know that gout is uh, generally main because of the uh, of a diet habit, because of the modern lifestyle, we eat a lot of meat and then especially and then uh, seafood, seafood and on top of that is beans, anything, um, legumes and nuts. Oh, these are all high in purine. These food are all high in purine, especially the very popular food is peanuts. Many people love peanuts, but they don't know, they don't know, know that uh, actually peanuts is high in purine. Okay, after you consume this food, it will be digested and it will be absorbed to the liver. And in the liver, this purine will be broken down into uric acid because this excess purine, your body doesn't need it. So after this breakdown, have been, the purine has been broken down to uric acid, it will send to the kidney through uh, or via the bloodstream and it will be sent to the kidney and then will be excreted to your urina urination. Um, this is a normal pathway. But the problem happens is if you continue the kind of high purine food or high purine diet lifestyle, you will accumulate a lot of, that means there will be excess of uric acid that is um, more than the capability or the capacity of your kidney to flush off. So there's an excess or, or high uric acid, you call it hyperuricemia in the bloodstream. So when you touch your blood, you will see the, the spike of uric acid. And this condition cannot uh, stay for too long. If it prolongs for, uh, means for, a, for a certain period of time, that means it's the consumption of uric acid or the consumption of purine is more than the ab ability of the kidney. Um, then this excess purine in the bloodstream has to be high somewhere. So your body will, will push them off the bloodstream because uh, high uric acid will reduce the pH of the blood and which will affect the metabolism or overall, overall metabolism of, of the body. So your body has to maintain the pH um, of the bloodstream. To achieve that, um, they have to hide it somewhere outside the bloodstream. So they throw it to the area we call interstitial fluid. Imagine these are your muscle tissues. So these layers between them. So initially your body idea is like, um, Okay, I temporarily store the uric acid somewhere here so that when your kidney is free, has a capacity, I will reabsorb back and then flush out. But the problem is because uh, we, you continuously in, input more purine, so there's never have a chance for your kidney to clear the store of uric acid here. Eventually, this acid will seep further in to until it reaches your joints. And when it reaches your joints, and the, because this is the end point, there's no way else you can go. This is the deepest level of your body. So eventually the uric acid will accumulate in the joints, the synovia fluid here. And when it reaches the saturation level, and when the temperature slightly drops a little bit and it crystallizes. And this crystal form, your body thought, your body immune system thinks that it is a foreign substance. So it launch attack, that's what results in your gout attack. Um, and the common symptom is like a swollen and red and then uh, the redness on the on the painful side and then a rise of temperature on that particular side. You can feel a bit heat sensation. So this is the, how gout is formed through the diet and then how the uric acid seep through the pathway. So you pay attention to this area because currently the solution um, is, okay, we move into the next side first. Okay, I give you a, uh, because it usually hides in the joints and then it begins in the lower part on your, ankle, your big toe, and then it move to your ankle, and then it move to your knee, and then climbs up until you, you, you go to the joints of your fingers or your elbow. So it goes all the way up. This is the, this is the chronology of the uric acid or gout attack pattern. But usually for it re re to reach the hand, it takes about uh, more than 10 years. Okay, let's take a look at, okay, this is your joint. This is the healthy joint. But a person who have constantly been attacked uh, by gout, Eventually, you will notice the structure of the joint change. Right, let me zoom in a little bit. You can see because it each, every time there's a u, formation of uric acid, your white blood cell will launch, a lot of white blood cell will, will come into the joint. And the way the white blood cell perceives the uric crystal is like it's a foreign substance. So it will launch attack. Attack is like the release of free radicals. These free radicals, not only they attack to uh, the uric crystal, which your, the crystal doesn't, 
it, it does no harm to the crystal because it's not an organism, it's just a, it's a mineral. So these free radicals will, in the other hand, will go attack your normal tissues or your normal cells. Over time, uh, repeatedly, your gout attacks eventually will evolve from a gouty arthritis, it will evolve to osteoarthritis or even rheumatoid arthritis, which makes the condition even more complicated. That's why you need to address your gout in the early phase. That means your gout condition or hyperuricemia condition in early phase. All right. Um, this is the, a, a, a brief preview. So uh, this is normal joint and then the initial phase of attack. So your, your, your joints start to deform. And then eventually, um, it, the cartilage will start to peel off or the cartilage will become thin and, and become the layer become thin and your body out over time, the site of injury, because this, your body consider this a site of injury, to protect it, it will form fibrosis. So you can, I mean, after a while, your joint cannot bend because there's no more flexibility, flexibility here because of the formation of the fibroid or the fibrosis in the joint because due to constant injury or internal injury, the inflammation. Now let's take a look at a uh, current solution. So you go to the doctor, the doctor say, oh, you have to cut off most of the high purine diet, which is a huge range. You can basically almost, mo most of the daily food in modern days you cannot eat. So they ask you cut down meat, they cut down seafood, cut down legumes, cut down beans. So to, to minimize the in intake of the purine. And on, on top of that, they might give you some medicine uh, to suppress the conversion of um, uric acid, uh, purine into uric acid in the liver. Uh, for example, it's like alloprino, febusostat, and it comes with different brand names. On top of that, they will make, give you a uricosoric. Uh, uricosoric is to promote, urina uh, promote uh, urination so that to achieve the objective to flush out the, the uric acid in the bloodstream. That is the conventional medical approach. But you can, as you can see, it touches nothing in this area. That's why if you consume um, the, those medi medicine, you, many people will, uh, told me that um, beginning, yes, they might see some drop in uric acid. But after that, they noticed that even though they have been continuously taking the medicine as mentioned, um, the gut attack still happens. Because why? Because the old uric acid is still here. You are, in order to be free from gout, your objective is to clear this site. So let's change um, a perspective. I mean, to change a, a different approach, like uh, using the pH. Because as you know, gout is because of your acid. Acid, you're talking about acid. So the only way to neutralize it is to use alkaline. Now, this is where my supplement comes in, uh, which is the calcaline. Uh, I just briefly show you, okay, now I, this is distilled water. Okay, I put a pH drop first. This is the pH, pH drop. The color chart, if it's alkaline, it will be blue or high alkaline is purple. If neutral, it's green. It's acidic, it's yellow, according to this chart. All right, now I put, this is distilled water. Distilled water or reverse osmosis, or osmosis water is slightly near the neutral, slightly acidic neutral level, a pH about 6.7. So, and the, okay, I pour one whole glass, okay. So the power of calcaline, calcaline is an extract from um, sea minerals, uh, like coral stones and shells, not the, not the flesh of the shells, the, just the shells and some st stalactite stones, which is rich in calcium, ionic calcium. But it's through the extraction process, they activate it. So it's, it's not your typical calcium, but it's ionic calcium, it's very active. So imagine this one whole glass, right? I just drop, it's in powder form. So I just one tiny drop. I already dropped in this tiny little bit. Now let's stir it. So it becomes strong alkaline. And this kind of alkalinity is different from the alkaline from alkaline water from the machine, as uh, like the very popular machine is quite expensive. So those are alkaline as well. But this the alkalinity is from different types of minerals. What you want is the calcium. Because like I mentioned just now, our objective is to clear this area. Somehow, because of calcium, when you have too much calcium, ionic calcium, your body will go store it in the in the bones. So Indirectly, because of the nature of the calcium to walk towards the bone, that's why calcaline works very well in it because you want the alkaline minerals to come here and neutralize the uric acid and bring it out. So that's objective. That's why calcaline works very well in terms of neutralizing this side. I mean, the uric acid in your muscle tissue and the joint as well. So let's give, it a, give, uh, give you a brief idea. So when you drink, I suggest it's like you're having gout, you drink at least 
this is like about um, 250 ml of uh, water. So you drink, so one glass is just one drop. So one day, minimum you drink six glasses, then you will see a lot of um, positive changes over, over, over the course of a few months. All right, let's take a look. If you drink calcaline water, it will go into your, so you will absorb it into a, from your stomach, it starts to absorb and it go into your bloodstream it go into the small intestine and then it will be absorbed furthermore in the, your bloodstream and it will neutralize it and then it will bring, it will, it will just like bind to the uric acid and bring it out through your urine. And then it will seep into your muscle tissues, like I mentioned before, and then go into the joint and the same process, we will reverse it and then it will reverse the direction of the uric acid. Previously, it's a uric acid formation here. Now, since you drink calcaline water, it will reverse the process, it will come out. Okay, uh, <clears throat> i give you an idea. So now our objective is to, to clear it. So after you reverse, it starts to flush it out. All right. There's one thing I want to mention is that just now I did mention that it goes into your joint and then it will bring out this accumulated, years of accumulated uric acid or uric crystal in the joint to flush it out. But this process, the moving of the uric acid from your joint will trigger some sort of healing crisis. I mean, uh, when you drink it, if you have you are long-term gout uh, sufferer, if you're beginning drink calcaline water, do expect some sort of pain. It can be very painful, so you have to be ready for it. If you want to be free from gout for good, that this is the process you need to go through. So if you don't want to too drastic, then you might don't. I mean, you might start with maybe two glasses in the day, go mild. But if you want go fast, then you will expect this moving, as long as the movement of uric acid or uric crystal, you will trigger the uh, body immune system because they thought there's a new formation of uric acid. That's why they launched attack. But they didn't know actually it's a reversal of the action. Any, any stirring up of the old crystal will cause gout attack in general. So do expect there's some sort of healing crisis um, like muscle soreness. Imagine that the acid is going to your muscle tissues. So your muscle will feel a soreness or a pain, even to the level of pain. So I just, I have to tell you this. You might have to go through this. But over time, they will slowly seep out all the uric acid from your muscle tissue layer and then go into the bloodstream. So in this, uh, sorry. In this early phase, you might experience, you might, if you go for a blood test, you might see a spike of uric acid in your blood uh, stream. So don't be surprised because it's normal because the bloodstream is from uh, your joint to the bloodstream. All right, this is a, a reference range. Uh, if you are having gout, you know these numbers very well. So there are two types of units, a millimole per liter or milligram per deciliter. So uh, depends on uh, the lab test or the, the, your clinic that you go to, there are two, just a, the range is, is, this is the reference range. So based on my experience with um, thousands of clients who have been using cat client, gout clients, so I give you a, uh, an, a brief idea how long does it take for you to be uh, sort of free, free from gout or reduce significantly your gout attack. It's like, okay, your gout history, if it's less than three years, so or your uric acid level is uh, below, is around 0 0.45 millimole per liter. So it takes about three months of drinking calcaline water uh, six glasses a day minimum, then you will see a very significant drop of your uh, uric acid level. At the same time, the reduction of the frequency of gout attack. All right, if your gout history is three to five years or your current, your latest uric acid reading is 0 0.6, 0 0.46 to, to 0 0.6, then you may need to drink calcaline for six months. That's it. Once you pass, once you bring down the uric acid level to this healthy range, you are basically almost free from gout. So you don't have to depend on calcaline. Calcaline is not a medicine. It's just an alternative way to make your alkaline, the water become alkaline, which is rich in ionic calcium to pull the uric acid out. All right, back to here. If your gout history is from five years to 10 years, then or your uric acid level is from 0.61 millimole to 0.8 millimole per liter, then you may need to drink about a year in order to see significant changes. And if your gout condition is more than 10 years, then the condition might be a bit complicated because you may already have top five stones. So it's, it, takes, it takes a longer time. So to be safe, I would say it takes about three years. So you need to consistent in drinking it. So it depends on your situation. And, and this is just for reference. And different people have con uh, the body condition, the body metabolic uh, condition is different. So the, the, the result might vary. 
But overall, you understand the logic that um, calculating just works in a way that um, to flush out the euro exit. All right, thank you.